You know what I've been thinking about recently? Other than my inevitable demise. Potato can it I mean, why do centipedes have so many legs? I mean, if I didn't have to tie my shoes every day, I might want more than two. But trust me, two shoes is already way too many. Plus, think of the cost of shoe maintenance if we were like centipedes and millipedes and all that. Like, hello, yes, I would like to order 50 pairs of your cheapest shoe, please. Size 0 0.0000001, please. Yes, thank you. So, the name centipede, it means 100 foot, if you break that apart. But can centipedes actually have 100 feet? Well, based on the fact that centipedes have an odd number of body segments and each segment has two legs, the answer is no, because 100 is too even of a number. They could have 51 pairs or 49 pairs, but never 50 pairs. So it'll never have exactly 100 legs. The name is a lie. However, some species do in fact have more than 100, and they can vary greatly from having 15 pairs of legs to an astonishing 177 pairs of legs. That's a total of 342 legs! The shoe cost! Oh my! Say goodbye to your college funds, kids. I'm getting me some Jordans! You see, this is how you can tell a millipede apart from a centipede. Centipedes only have one pair of legs per segment, whereas millipedes can have two, and sometimes more. The most legs we've recorded a millipede having was 750. Ah? I don't think you understand that. Let me, let me clarify. Ah! No thanks. And yeah, that's including the weird back legs these creatures have. They have a lot of weird legs, actually. Like, the pincers that they got are actually just legs that are modified into venomous thing-like legs for hunting. The further back you get from the head, the larger the legs get to help with balance when they stand up. Oh yeah, they stand up. Like a cobra! They're basically snakes with armor! Which sounds way cooler than it looks. The back legs are actually similar to sensory antenna, evolved to have tons of bristles that can feel as they back up or dig. Did I mention that they dig? Well, most of them can't. It all depends on their leg structure. Speaking of legs, why do they have so many? I mean, having legs in such an abundance makes sense why they are totally willing to just drop them off if there's trouble. And then they just grow them back. It's like how crabs do that with their arm. Like, oh, I'm being chased by a predator here, just take this. Here's a fact about how they get so many legs. Every time they molt or shed, they grow more legs. Imagine that. Just waking up one morning and peeling off your skin to reveal you have more limbs. But we're here for the big question. Why? Just why? More specifically though, why do they have so many legs? Sure, some of them do other things than just walk and climb and stuff, but still, why? What? And to answer that, I'm going to answer some smaller questions first to build up a good reasoning as to why they are the way they are. Some old school Aristotle and four causes, you know? Historically, centipedes, or myiropods, are anthropods, multi-segmented creatures, each segment having a pair of legs. They can vary from insectoid to crustacean. These creatures used segments of their body for special purposes, as I said. But did you know that the ones that grab onto food and put it up to its mouth are called lips? Yeah, it has legs that are called lips. Lip legs. I don't want to think about that. Each group of these segments has evolved together over time, so historically, they have so many legs because they are a myropod, and over generations, they continually got longer and longer. So, a creature with segments that normally has a pair of legs on each segment, slowly gaining more segments because, you know, more segments, more survivability. Well, if you gain a segment with legs, you gain legs. The legs being there per segment is a genetic rule, so whenever it got more segments to get bigger and longer, it got more legs too. And this just repeated a whole bunch until you got what we have today. A thing I don't want. But interestingly, these days there are some that have segments without legs, but they might have had legs there at one point some generations ago. So in hindsight, this is pretty obvious. The point is that evolution dictates how organisms change, but we can make this more interesting. 
In all life, there are genes called Hox genes, which can cause tagmosis. Tagmosis is the evolutionary process of modifying segments in metameric organisms such as anthropods to form tagmata. Oh, and tagmata is what you would call a group of segments. Like, the head tagmata is actually those first four parts. Or the tail tagmata, it's the last three. We do this with almost all insects. You remember third grade? Me neither, but I remember that bugs have a head, thorax, and abdomen for the most part. These are all tagmatas, and tagmosis is the changing of them. To clear things out. Back to Hox genes, though. They are the directions when the DNA is building the body. That's why some legs are antenna or mouth parts. Like lips, lip legs, what? The Hox gene in one segment is different from the Hox genes in other segments. So if your centipede's Hox genes are a lot of leg segments, then it will grow according to that blueprint. And apparently, that blueprint says you need a million gosh darn legs. But how would a body even work with that many legs? I've seen plenty of humans have trouble with just a two. Sometimes I trip on nothing. I couldn't even imagine tripping 80 times because my brain just couldn't keep up with all those legs. We talked about how every time they molted they got more legs, right? And that's all because of those Hox genes again. If we were supposed to grow extra limbs, our internal genes would allow us the ability to. It's pretty simple in hindsight, again. However, not all centipedes are like this. The house centipede, which lives in your house, molts and grows legs every time. But other centipedes are born with the total number of legs they will ever get, meaning that their ancestors realized... Well, it's not like their ancestors realized, because it's not like a cognitive thing. It's more or less all the other ones died before propagating, which meant that the one that was doing it better lived on to breed more. You know. School. Maybe already having all of your legs makes it easier to molt, and it takes less energy to do so, so there's a smaller chance of dying halfway through molting. Or maybe the common house centipedes got it right, only using a small amount of the legs to save on energy until you can prey upon larger game to get the energy to then add to your leg collection. And that brings me to my final point. How come evolution dictated that this was a good idea? That's possibly the hardest question. Sure, we know that they look the way they do because they are myaropods, and because genealogically, that's how they grow. And by mechanics, they can just grow more legs by design, but... Why does it have to be designed that way? Well, the answer is that they didn't need to lose them, so why would they? I'm serious. Centipedes are old. I mean, really old. In fact, one of the very few still existing creatures that were also from the first set of creatures to come out of the sea are centipedes and millipedes. In fact, the oldest land fossil we have is of a myropod. I've been pronouncing that wrong the whole time. Myriapod. I got letters mixed up in my brain. They were among the first creatures to colonize the land, and so they filled a very important role as a generalist, ground-level predator, or detritivore. Roles that they still play today. Oh yeah, detritivore means dirt eaters, like worms. They aren't allowed to sit at most dinner tables because eating dirt's kinda gross. So why have that many legs? Well honestly, it all comes down to evolution. Evolution never really told it that it needs less. I know that's kind of a stupid way of explaining it, but when you think about it, evolution would have needed to remove its legs. And while it has removed things from other creatures, that's not exactly common. It's similar to how many other myaropods did lose their legs to favor other types of segmented needs, but despite the stupid amount of legs, these creatures continued to survive and live millions of years. Having this many legs was never bad enough of a thing to bring about the extinction of centipedes or millipedes. So they're still here. However, there still was a need for them to have that many segments in the first place. Evolution is a two-way street. It yeets and it yoinks. Taketh and giveth. I can't sit here in good conscience and tell you that it has a lot of legs because evolution didn't take them away. No, you see, it's not actually the legs that evolution liked. 
it's the segments that the legs are attached to. If you are a creature that digs or crawls across the ground, your legs are important. But what's more important is that your body is slender and or able to bend and articulate delicately. Because of how many segments the centipede has, it's able to tunnel rather effectively as its body is spread out over a long tube. Same goes for climbing trees or other obstacles. Its multitude of legs confirm its grip on any surface along with being able to wrap around smooth objects using its muscles to grip. Whereas we humans have elbows and wrists, hips and things, larger segments for strong tasks, and smaller segments like fingers for delicate tasks, the same is true for the centipede. Its long body acts as our strong arms, while its tiny legs are used for delicate tasks, like being venomous fangs or antennas. Which brings me to my next point. Evolution didn't get rid of its legs because it's easy to just make a bunch of legs. Remember the DNA in Hawk's genes? They don't need much to build a basic blueprint for legs. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just look at the millipede. They tried to fix it. Look what happened. It became friendly and nice. It doesn't have giant venomous fangs. So in summary, it was good for them to get more segments to grow longer, which allowed them to dig and climb better. There just happened to also be genetic code in there that said each segment has legs. Therefore, as it added segments to its benefit, it also happened to add legs. Boom. Well, I hated this video. Centipedes are creepy. But if you like, I can always do more bug videos. Let me know in the comments. I talk about whatever happens to interest us at the moment, and Josh, who happens to write this video, happens to be in a bug mood. Which is unforgivable. Never stop learning.